Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game that comes as a suggestion from Ayun Damani. Uh, it's a game from the 2013 tournament in Beijing, China, uh, the Sport Accord World Mind Games and it's a game from round 7, Vasily Ivanchuk versus Anish Giri and it features the greatest opening ever, not the greatest gambit ever, the greatest opening ever, but also a very nice gambit and that is of course the King's Gambit. And uh, uh, we haven't uh, covered all that many games uh, uh, regarding the King's Gambit. We, we covered some, especially in the Morphe Saga and in the older games. But in modern times, not really. And is this really uh, the greatest um, uh, King's Gambit game that, that was played? Uh, it's hard to say uh, because th there, are, there are some of them being played and some of them are really great. But... Um, uh, that's why I, I chose the title so you guys can suggest uh, if there are some other games past 2013 that featured um, uh, King's Gambit and maybe a nice miniature, maybe, you know, uh, where good things happen. Uh, but that being said, let's check it out as uh, Vasil has the white pieces and he opens with E4. Uh, we have E5 by Anish and now F4 going for the King's Gambit. Of course, uh, E captures on F4 is played by Giri. He's an honorable person. Whenever someone plays the King's Gambit against you, you have to accept it that's that's how it works although nowadays uh if you play this in a blitz game or in a bullet game most people will just go for the uh, counter gambit so a uh, four counter gambit uh, because that also gives black uh, so much counter play but e captures on f4 the, there is nothing wrong with that and now uh, the most often way to play uh, against black is knight to f3 but um uh, just because uh, it's the most often way to play, it's not uh, maybe the best because, of course, Giri knows how to play against this. So here we have bishop to c4 going for the bishop's gambit. And now here white is asking black, do you want to go for this check? And going for this check is something that uh, might uh, be you know playable in for example 1850 uh, but nowadays it's it's just going to be really really hard to play uh, for example king to f1 and you don't care you haven't castled because next you're playing knight to f3 and you're going to start developing all of your pieces with uh, with tempo as the the black queen is very weirdly placed here on h4 for example knight f6 we're going to attack the queen and now after you you move this queen knight c3 then d4 then the the bishop comes alive and it's um even though it might be playable for a, for an engine uh um, you know a human might struggle with it a bit too much so instead after bishop to c4 we have the immediate knight to f6 and now knight to c3 developing and defending we have c6 now controlling this knight on c3 and and now bishop to b3. As you know, black is uh, uh, preparing d5. So here we have d5. And now you have to capture. If you go for e5, then knight to e4. And now it's it's black who's just, uh, you know, all, all over the board. That's not what, what you want to see. So instead, after d5, we have e captures on d5, c captures, and now d4. So grabbing more space in the center, we have bishop to d6. Now defending this pawn. And here we have knight g to e2. Uh, sometimes uh, black can play in a way that uh, after he accepts um, uh, the gambit with e captures on f4, uh, he's going to try and defend this pawn. But this this usually n never works out. So here there are some games that reach this exact same position. For example, there's one uh, not so long ago in, two, in 2021. Uh, Yanni Pomnishi tried it against Levon Aronian. He played bishop to uh, g4 here. Uh, or rather, uh, Levon played bishop to g4 here. And he won a very nice game against Nepo. It was in the Magnus Carlsen in uh, and also there's a game from 2013, some six months before this game between Ivanchuk and, and Giri, uh, where, ca where, where simply Castles was, was played. It was between Simon Williams and Marcus Rager, and Rager defeated Williams here. Uh, but for this game, uh, Anish wanted something special. He wanted to play in great style, and he played f3. So he's giving back the pawn voluntarily, and now he says, all right, uh, at least I'm going to mess up uh, your, your uh, pawn structure in front of the king. Uh, but the, this is maybe... Uh, exactly what uh, what Vasil wa wants because uh, he wants to castle queen side. He he doesn't want to castle king side. And since uh, Giri will be castling king side, he's gonna use the open G file for the attack. But okay. Uh, that is why we're showing the game. So G captures on F3, uh, Anish castles here, and now Bishop to G5. So now the Queen will move, uh, he will castle Queenside, and then he's gonna try to use the open G file, semi-open G file for attacking purposes. 
uh, we have bishop to e6 and now queen to d2. Uh, as planned, now preparing the castle queenside, bishop to e7, now the knight can move, and here we have queenside castles, and it is now, uh, as of move 12, uh, that we have a completely new game, but also uh, a position that has never been reached a game since. Uh, some of you ask me, why do I say this? I say it's a completely new game if I'm covering a game from 2021, uh, or modern games, but if I cover a game from 1942, uh, then I'm going to say uh, it's a position that has never been reached again, uh, because, uh, you know, it's weird to say it's a completely new new position uh, if the position happened 150 years ago so that's why I use it but it's basically the same stuff so here uh, after this queenside castles we have knight to c6 just continuing development and now uh, while you might throw in a nice prophylactic king to b1 this is now no time to be prophylactic and Vasil goes for knight to f4 so what do you what do you do here uh, we have knight to a5 now saying that okay you're attacking uh uh, you're attacking my d5 pawn three times uh, and also just preparing to eliminate one of the defenders. So I could lose material here. So Giri is ready to eliminate this bishop with check. So he eliminates one of the attackers to the d5 pawn. So here rook h to e1. Here again one might expect just to rook to g1. Uh, because we do have the open semi-open G file, we want to double rooks on the G file. Uh, but uh, Vasil uh, decides to play it like they did in the old days. When you play the King's Gambit, the rooks belong on D1 and E1, and good things will happen. So here Anish grabs the bishop. We have uh, knight captures on B3 with check, A captures, and now H6, uh, giving uh, giving uh, Vasil a uh, deadly there. Uh, he might be interested in capturing here, but he's not. He plays bishop back to h4, and now queen to a5. And now uh, you will see how black's position is completely hopeless uh, after Vasil plays king to b1. So now the prophylactic king to b1 has to be played. Now it's not even prophylactic, now it's just a necessity. Uh, but after king to b1, uh, there is no good move for black. Whatever you play is just bad. To give you an example, uh, okay, there's maybe g5 here attacking two of, uh, two of uh, white's people. Pieces, but then we can just eliminate this bishop here and capture. We, we don't care about this. This is hanging. So uh, black's entire king side just falls apart. And after king to b1, we you, you could also play something like rook 8 to c8. But now you fall into a trap that uh, uh, many a player has fallen for uh, when this diagonal is open. The, the, for example, there are plenty of games in the Sicilian you can find uh, where this has uh, happened, uh, because now there you can just play knight captures on d5. And now you're threatening to capture black's queen, so you've just won material, you're threatening knight captures uh, bishop on e7, and here there really is no... Uh, there, there is no good move here for white. Whatever you play is just bad. If you trade queens, then you just lose a piece here with check. Only after the king moves, we're going to eliminate the queen, and now we're up a piece. So very, very easily winning. And other than that, you, you don't have a good move. You don't have a move here. You could go back queen to d8, but then we just play knight captures queen captures, and now knight to h5, attacking that pinned knight. Uh, and now... Uh, we're just gonna capture and uh, you know everything just gets completely demolished here so instead after king to b1 Anish plays knight to e4 it's his last attempt uh, to, to try and break through the white queen is now under attack and he's also attacking the bishop here on h4 uh, that is undefended but now uh, we have uh, f captures on e4 grabbing that knight bishop captures here and now only now rook to g1 and rook to g1 is the only winning move here as you have to be really really quick uh, the problem is if black tries something like captures a pawn, then we can just eliminate this guy and then we've opened up this diagonal. So just captures, captures, queen captures on h6 and that's it. There's no defending this, the bishop is under attack. Uh, after the bishop defends, we can play knight captures on e4, add another attacker here and if the queen comes to help out with the defense, we can just capture and after let's say queen captures, just bring the rook into the game. For example, rook or queen f7, rook g1 and uh, there are many ways black can defend this but in all of them... Uh, uh, he will lose terribly. So instead, after rook to g1, we have bishop to g5, but it doesn't matter. Here, uh, you could play something like queen to g2 and then threaten h4 to eliminate, to, to remove the bishop from the defense of the g7 pawn, uh, but Vassal goes for it right away. So here we have h4, bishop captures, queen captures, and now king to h8. This is still a threat. So king to h8, now the g pawn will be able to capture, but now only now e captures on d5. And this is just the the absolute simplest way to win uh, because it's it's so beautiful the, the bishop of course cannot capture because then you play queen here uh to, to e5 and now you're threatening not only checkmate but also uh, to, to win the piece so 
uh, white would lo uh, seriously lose material here. So instead, after this e captures on d5, we have bishop to d7. Uh, but now comes a move that you have to find. There are many moves, many moves are winning, uh, but one is just uh, completely winning. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the absolute uh, most precise move uh, to win this game for Vasil uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on always going for, uh, always looking for a sacrifice first. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen captures on h6. No, it's not. I'm only tricking you. It's it's a rook captures on g7. You you had it right. Uh, so here you don't really have a good response, and you have to capture the rook. Otherwise, uh, you, let's say you try something like queen here to defend the pawn. We can just block this. Now the queen no longer defends. Now you have to capture, and now we go into the same line that actually happened in the game. So instead, uh, king captures was played, but now comes rook to g1, and now the queen and the rook are completely cutting off the king from uh, going anywhere. You have to go to the h file, and you have to go to h7 to guard the h6 pawn. So king to h7 was played, and now comes knight to e4 again showing how how simple life is for for chucky uh just going for that f6 square even though if he wanted to calculate he could uh, find the forcing queen to e4 check it's also very nice so i'm going to show it king to h8 queen to e5 check now you have to block this otherwise it's just checkmate so you have to block this but now you go back Queen e3, again threaten this, and now you try to force the king to, to h7 to get this queen to e7 check move in. So you have to defend this, but now comes this with check, and only now after the king moves, now comes this uh, checkmate. So it's a very it's a very beautiful pattern, and uh, you know it's important to know it. So you can you know use this to check the check the black king, not like that. Uh, and then at some point the f pawn will have to move, and then you're gonna re maneuver the queen and uh, you know deliver checkmate. So it might be useful for you at some point. But uh, he goes for the more simpler line, knight to e4. Now just going for knight to f6, check queen to h6, checkmate. F6, there, there's no defense, you have to play something. Knight captures with check, rook captures, and queen captures. Now threatening checkmate here. And after bishop to g4 was played here, okay, this bishop to g4 is the one last super sneaky attempt by Anish to, to trick um, uh, Vassil into, into falling for it. If the bishop is captured, then you have a draw by perpetual checking, just queen e1 check, king here, queen goes here, king go, king to b1, and then, you know, to, to infinity or, or three times as the modern rules um, are like that now. So after bishop to g4, uh, Vassal just played queen to e7 with check. Again, the absolute simplest way to win. And it was in this position on move 28 that uh, Anish Giri resigned the game. And uh, this uh, brilliant, brilliant victory was achieved by Vassal Ivanchuk in round 7 uh, of this, uh, well, very, very nice tournament. So uh, very interesting here, of course, you resign because the E1 square is now covered, so you will not be able to use this E1 square for perpetual checking. And after the king moves, we're just going to capture on G4, and that's it. Again, we're threatening checkmate. There is no defense. Once you block this, now we just go in, in, in for the kill. You can deliver check here, check here, and now whatever happens is just going to be checkmate. Uh, rook captures or, or, or even queen captures. So uh, after queen to e7, uh, Giri resigned and uh, really, really an awesome game. So like I said, if you have any other suggestions of the King's Gambit being played past 2013, I uh, do suggest it as, uh, well, it's um, it's a beautiful opening and always, uh, you know, very impressive games uh, arise from, uh, from using it. So thank you again for such a wonderful suggestion. Uh, I would like to thank Andre Tigla, uh, Vlad Komilev, happy birthday, I, Paul. Uh, Gregory Williams and Derek King for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.